Hey everybody, this is Tom Sorcy. Today we are talking about the Storm Intense. But before we do, hope you guys like that new introduction. A little more production value than you're probably used to seeing with my videos in the past. A special thanks to Tim Friends for helping with the video and Jim DeWitt for the music. I'll talk a little more about them at the end, but let's get into the ball. The Intense has the R3S Pearl cover stock. If that sounds familiar, it is the same one as the Snaplock, which knowing that is going to make some of my observations make a little more sense, at least it does to me. It has the Rad E core, which is which is a new core, a new version of the Rad core. 2.49 RG, so that's a lower RG, something that's a little more core heavy, something that typically is going to be a little earlier. Differential 050, that's going to be higher flaring. Here's mine, 50 by 5 by 40. Relatively standard pin over the finger layout. If it looks familiar, it looks a lot like a, a Roto Grip No Rolls Pearl color combination wise. It also rolls very similarly, very similar RG numbers. So I expect some of the things I'm going to say to be pretty similar to that. The pattern is unknown, very laterally defined, lots of oil in the middle, lots of friction to the right, actually somewhat clipped as well. New, we have a GoPro down by the pins so that we can see ball and pin deflection. We're going to talk a lot about that as we go forward today. And hopefully you guys like some of the new stuff, and let's check it out. So we have this quick response cover stock in this asymmetrical, low RG, high differential core, and we expect it to want to stand up very quickly when it sees friction. As we see on this shot here, we get it to the friction early, and it really wants to get turned over. These strong asymmetrical cores, when they see friction, they want to get to their preferred spin axis quickly. And that's what we see with this intense. What we will notice is that like the snap lock before it, and like the no rules pearl before it, as you open up your angles and as you begin to sense more friction in the front, they're going to basically want to stand up and kind of lay after they make their motion. What you'll see here is it's going to stand up and it's going to, you see a lot of deflection in the pins. You see the six pin start to kind of snap the 10. There's nothing wrong with that per se, but it's something that I want to keep my eye on as I continue to move left, as I continue to play. Here we get our speed a little slower. We get it up high on the head pin to get the proper strike three into the six into the 10. And then we get one a little right and then we have another week 10. We finally saw it. So as we chase it left, we're just keeping our eye on that six pin and what we're seeing. And if we can get our rev rate up and if we can get our speed down, we can still stay matched up like that shot there. But the more often that we begin to see that six pin lay in the air, the more that we're concerned. This one got to the right really early and we leave the blower 710. So what we're seeing is that it's seeing that friction, it's standing up and then it's kind of just laying off. It's already used up its energy so quickly. And because that can tend to happen as we open up our angles, the more we begin to see that kind of deflection, the more we need to start thinking about our next option. Now, what I'm not saying is that it's bad or that I wouldn't be using that ball motion in a tournament. What I am saying is that I'm keying on that six pin. And the more I see that six pin start to lay, the more I'm thinking about what my next decision is. Do I go to a weaker asymmetrical ball? Do I go to a symmetrical quicker response ball? What's my next choice to make? Do I want to move left and slow down? There's a number of different options that you can make to try to strike. But I don't ever want to leave the building and say, only I could have carried, I would have won. You hear all the time somebody say, oh, if I, you know, I left five nine pins today, or I left a dozen ten pins tonight. And the reality is that that's just pin deflection. You leave a 9-pin because you don't have enough deflection. You leave a ring 10 or a weak 10 because you have too much deflection. 
and there's a decision that can be made to alter your pin deflection. You are in control of your deflection. There are choices that you can make to alter your deflection. And only if you're aware of it are you able to make those decisions. Today we're comparing it to the code red, and I chose the code red because this is the ball that I tend to go to when I begin to see my intense plaque. The code red is R2S hybrid, which we would expect to be slightly slower response than the intense. And what you tend to see is that it's less likely to kind of hook and lay when we see more friction. On top of that, I drilled this code red weaker than my intents for that exact purpose. I wanted an option to get to that was still asymmetric, that still had those core dynamics, but that wasn't going to be so strong as to me being worried that it's used up. And you can see right there, we sort of roll the bucket out. It tends to hydroplane a little bit down lane when we get into the oil. But you can also see that we aren't having really a lot of difficult problems with our, with our pin carry. We are putting the 6 right into the 10. It's not laying in the gutter. It's not using up before it gets to the pins. And even that one there, we get it to the right. We still kind of get the little mixer saw the rack kind of idea going on. Okay, and so then we have, you know, we still have the blower 710 in that time. It's kind of hard to tell, but it appears that that was a 710 caused by it getting too far down the lane versus being used up. So what did we do? We moved left, we got a little slower. We split the 8-9, okay, we two-pin here. So we know we have to keep our speed down because now we're in more oil. We are using a weaker ball than we were with the intense. But as soon as we get our speed right, now it looks great going through the pins. Now we don't have the concern that we're going to leave the week 10. Everything seems to be going 6 into the 10. That's the reason why I chose to use this code red, just because it's the ball that I go to next. Most times when I'm seeing that plaque 10 of the strong asymmetrical balls. But what's really important is what I talked about before we saw the code red shots. It's about using our eyes. It's about being able to see what's happening with our pin deflection. And if there's one thing that you take away from this, beside the fact that, that both of these are very usable balls that come out of my bag on a mostly daily basis, it's that if we can use our eyes to key on our pin deflection, then we are one step ahead of other people. We're not satisfied with just hitting the pocket. We want to be able to strike and continue to strike through transition, crossing pairs as the tournament progresses. And if we're able to key on our deflection, then we are able to make choices based on that deflection instead of letting that deflection be in control of us. And being able to recognize that and make an adjustment based off that, whether it's physical or whether it's a ball, puts you one step ahead of most people especially as the patterns get more difficult. Not enough people use pin deflection as one of their tools, as one of the tricks in their bags. Not enough people identify their pin deflection and use that to their advantage. They don't know what kind of hits they look for that are best for their game. They don't know when they see a different kind of hit what sort of adjustments need to be made in order to get back to their hit. And that's an important thing that everyone should take a look at especially if they're going to a new place that they haven't been to and they don't know how the pins fall there. So the storm intense, I'm going to say medium high friction and medium quick to quick response. And what I want to clarify is that it's not necessarily important trying to compare which is stronger of all of your balls, where they're going to stand as far as is just four or five boards stronger than that because, because those things don't really matter because those things can change if we change the pattern a certain way. We can make one ball look stronger than another ball, change the pattern, and then they flip-flop. What's important from a strength standpoint is comparing balls of similar response time. So in the quick to medium quick response range of balls, this is very strong comparatively. So it's something that we know when it starts to use up, we have other weaker options in the quicker response time category of our arsenal. So it's really important to look at them in groups of response time when you're comparing them and then you're making your choices. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this one, out of deflection, out of the camera down at the pins. Hopefully you guys like all the changes that we did. I got a lot of people that I want to thank that I probably don't thank enough. Obviously Storm and Roto Grip. 
for giving me the opportunity to be part of their team and show these to you. Brad Angelo Lanes for letting me go in there and carte blanche of the place usually and film my videos there. Speaking of filming, Tim Friends of Friends Photography will have his website posted up there for you for helping me do all the video. And lastly, Jim DeWitt for hooking me up with the music. Another link for him will be on there as well. Thank you. As usual, if you got any questions, any comments, let me know. You can find me on facebook.com slash tmsourcey, youtube.com slash tomsourcey, or at tomsourcey on Twitter. I try to answer as many questions as I can from everybody, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and you can tell me what you liked and didn't like about a lot of the new stuff, and we'll see you from there. Thanks.